when I was growing up, I always received warnings from my parents about various issues. They would say things like, don't touch that. You'll cut yourself. They would say things like, don't touch that. You will burn yourself. Be very careful using these tools. They're not toys. Don't play in the road. You see, children don't usually appreciate the many warnings they receive from their parents until they have children of their own. And why do you think we receive warnings from those who are wiser? Could it be because they love us and don't wish to see us suffer? Could it be that they know what is ahead of us if we ignore their warnings? You see, ladies and gentlemen, God loves us and he knows what is ahead of us. You see, God warned Adam and Eve not to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He warned the people of Noah's day. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. He warned the people of Noah's day that a worldwide flood was coming. 120 years later, the flood came. All were drowned except eight people. You see, in this story, God kept his promise. Noah and his family were saved. Like so many people today, they are being warned, even at the stake of someone setting up a speaker in a microphone and telling you directly what God is saying. But well, people would rather still not listen. They would rather have to see for themselves just exactly what God is going to do. All drowned except eight. Noah and his family. You see, God warned Nineveh through Jonah of judgment if they did not repent. It wasn't that God was asking them, join a religion or die. It wasn't like God was telling them, renounce your ways of this religion or die. God simply said, repent. That seems to be very hard for people to understand today. But, you know, when we look at the TV and we see them telling us to do certain things, we're quick to wear a mask. We're quick to take a shot, to keep our jobs. But we're not so quick to hear God and what he's saying, even though God has proven himself to be true and he watches over his word. God still sends people to warn other people. God warned Nineveh through Jonah of judgment if they did not repent. God warned Judah 345 years to repent or face judgment. And he warned Israel for 210 years. God is patient. He's been patient with us. But what have we done? Instead, we have decided that we were going to legalize same-sex marriage. If that was not enough, we decided that we were going to pit poison into our children. No, that's just not enough. No, we said that we are going to take prayer out of school. We're going to take prayer out of a home. And we're going to destroy the family unit. No, that's just not enough. But you see, neither listen. God warned the eight, right? He warned people. That a flood was coming. Eight people listen. He warned Nineveh. He warned Judah. He warned Israel. And now he warns us. And all these warnings, they came to pass. Neither of them listen. Except for Nineveh. They repented. The king was like, we got to do something about this. 
We have to do what God says. Not because God is forcing us or he's scaring us. God doesn't have a need to do that. That's not him. God doesn't pit fear into you to make you do something. I wasn't be afraid. Fear wasn't pit into me for me to do this. But you see, when people don't listen to the warning, then comes the judgment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then comes the judgment. See, God sent me here today to warn you. He knew exactly who you are. He knew that you would come here tonight. He knew what you were going to do. And he knew just exactly where to place me. There is another judgment coming upon the whole world that will be even worse than the flood of Noah's day. We're living in the last generation. You're living in the last generation, ladies and gentlemen. You are living in it. Jesus said of this judgment, he said, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever will be. Unless those days were shortened. No flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. See the book of Revelations in the Bible, which details the coming seven-year tribulation? It was written in 95 A.D., it has been warning us since that time that Jesus is coming back. And what do we do? Just continue on living how we've been living because we don't believe that God is real, right? We don't believe that he's real. But yet, if we look at the creation, it's proven evidence. The reason that people have become ignorant is because they have not taken the time to study. They have become lazy. That's just this generation today. Lukewarm. The book has been warning us since that time that Jesus is coming back and everything in this book will be fulfilled he said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means pass away. You see, the purpose of the tribulation is for God to bring the Jewish nation back to himself through repentance and to know their Messiah and also to judge the world. That time is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Many will come to Christ during this time. But will be martyred for doing so. 21 judgments will come upon this world. Yes, this world that you are currently in, the, the, the ground that you walk on. 21 judgments will come upon the world. Seven seal judgments. Seven trumpet judgments. Oh, you don't know what a trumpet is. Let me, let me, let me remind you. One day that trumpet will sound. I want. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, 21 judgments will come upon the world. Seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, and seven bowl judgments. Some may say, I'll just turn to Christ and get saved. Actually, if you are in the tribulation, there's a good chance you will not turn to Christ. And even if you do so, you will probably suffer martyrdom. The same way 
The same way that they behead people is the same way they'll kill you. The word of God says that for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they should all be condemned. Now, why would God do something like that? Well, just just look around you, ladies and gentlemen, just look around you right now. Take a good look. Who's listening? Who's who's heeding the warning? Only a few people. Many people today are still carrying on with their life. I'm I'm still going to go to Walmart and just get my shopping done. I'm still going to do what I want to do, even though God is knocking on the door of my heart. I'm still going to do what I want to do. The word of God warns you. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. The truth is being spoken to you. The choice is yours today, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to go into condemnation? Yes or no? Yes or no? The choice is yours. He said, condemned who did not believe the lie, right? No. Condemned who believed the lie. Who did not believe the truth? No one can blame God for anything. No one can say, God didn't tell me. God's going to say, roll the tapes back. He was over there by Walmart. She was over there by BJ's. She heard somebody talking on the microphone, but she ignored it. We know that we are in problems in our lives. We know that we need help. And you know that Jesus is reaching his hand out to you, but you don't want to accept the gift. But then you're quick to blame God when things go wrong in your life. When it's not God to blame, it's ourselves. Our world right now is turned on its head. Amen. God bless you. Turned on its head. Begging for the judgment of God. Many folks are saying that nothing has happened in 2,000 years. So there is no God, right? Nothing has happened. There must be no God. He, he must be talking about a fairy tale. The Lord says, the Lord says this. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come. God says, I just want to remind you so that when it happens, you'll know. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth, following their own desires. Remember, God said this. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water, surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment. When ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this first thing, friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And a thousand years is like a day. 
The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people would think. No, he, he, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. That's what the word of God says. Folks, we are right on the break of Christ's return. And what do you do? He's been warning us for a long time. It seems to those who do not know him that it will never happen. That I can continue on in my transgender lifestyle. My, my, I don't know what gender I am lifestyle. And walking and parading with my alphabet group, me and my flag. Because I don't believe that God is real, they say. They curse God in their hearts. But these very same people, if they don't repent, will go into destruction. It seems to those who do not know him, they think this won't happen. Remember this, every last prophecy of his first coming was fulfilled. Right down to the letter. There is no reason to think it will be otherwise for his return. Don't just stare at me, ladies and gentlemen. Read this word of God and get it into your souls. Too many people are staring and not listening. There is nothing more important than the eternal damnation. That's what God wants you to avoid. Because there's nothing more important than the eternal destination of our souls. Death is not the end for you. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen, sir, ma'am. Do you have regrets in your life? I'm sure you do. See, everyone probably has something in their life where they wish they had made a better decision. See, now is the time to get right about where you will spend eternity. I'm sure the people in Noah's day thought there would never be a worldwide flood. And I thought, you know, I pretty much think that people in this world back in 2019 thought that they will never have to wear a mask outside. But it happened. Pandemic, right down to the letter. They didn't think the world would flood. People know as they thought there would never be a worldwide flood since it had never rained at that time period, but the flood still came. Jesus said there was, there, there has never been anything like the tribulation and never will be again, but it is coming. The world is ripe for judgment. The world is ripe for judgment. That judgment is going to come. That judgment is going to come. We must turn to Jesus Christ. We must turn to Jesus Christ. Believe in him. Believe in Jesus. He is the one that can save you. Remember those regrets in your life. See, once the church is removed, you will be in tribulation. And there is no, there is no turning back. Yes, sir, go ahead and curse at me. That's fine. I forgive you. You curse at me. That's fine. You have freedom of speech. But don't sit here and harass me. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you today, Jesus loves you. But you see, then you will be forced to serve the Antichrist or be a martyr for Jesus Christ. If you choose the Antichrist, it's, it's not going to be about no COVID now. You will know exactly what you're doing. 
You will suffer hell on earth and then hell in the lake of fire for eternity. Jesus, the true Christ, loves you very much. That now is the time to face him as your savior. And Lord, rather than your judge, later on, believe in Jesus Christ. He's waiting for you. I know a lot of people are suffering tonight. I know a lot of people try to hide the pain. They try to deal with things on their own. But God wants you to know today that he's there for you. We don't have to sit here and play like nothing's going on in our life and we're all happy about everything. Of course, we're not happy. But we don't, sit, we don't have to sit here and hide it. We can give it to someone who can fix the problem. You can give it to Jesus Christ. He can fix the problem in your life. See, there's, there's peace in the midst of pain. Come on now, pick this message up. There's peace in the midst. God bless you. There's peace in the midst of the pain. See, God loves you so much that he sings over you. He loves you so much that he prays long and hard over you. Whenever you are down or hurt, he feels your pain too. Because he is totally in love with you. The Prince of Peace has been down the road you're traveling. He was not above it all, even though he is the son of God. He willingly suffered abuse, hatred, and rejection. But his plan was to come to earth to crush the head of the serpent at the interception. He's been through every kind of pain that is known to man. That's why he can relate to every single thing the devil has planned. But even with everything that was thrown his way, his blood brought our souls so only he can say, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Jesus loves you. Who do you choose today? See, God told Noah to build an ark because things on earth begin to get real dark. The men of those days mocked him and jarred. They didn't see, they didn't know the Lord, neither trusted him or feared him. But Noah found grace in God's eyes and he wanted him to be safe from the rain in the skies. So God told Noah to build a great boat so he and his family could stay afloat. And they were spared from the judgment that God spoke about. They were safe in the midst of the storm. God's love kept them dry and warm. They trusted in God's provision for the ark. His truth and his light took them out of the dark. The word of God says, and the ark rested on the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, Upon the mountains of Mount Ararat, the Turkish government has confirmed that the remains of Noah's Ark is sitting right there on the mount in Turkey. Also, there is now an exact life-size replica of Noah's Ark at a permanent exhibit in Kentucky. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as of yet... 
moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, you make your choice tonight. Make your choice today. The King of Kings wants an audience with you. And he's holding out his scepter for you to touch. Now is the time to approach him, for he has been waiting so long for you to run into his arm because he loves you so much. The King of Kings wants to invite you inside. And he's holding out his scepter for you to abide with him. Jesus Christ is the king of kings. He's the way for you to get to heaven's gate. And if you receive this as his atonement, we can lean on his sacrifice to get us past the gate. Otherwise, we'll all be have to face a very different outcome and fate. Yes, Jesus paved the way for us by dying for our sins with his pure and holy blood, which cleanses our hearts and minds and bodies and souls from all the filth and crud, that mud. None of us are righteous. No, not one. But we can be free from the wages of death, which is sin. By his stripes, he can, we can make it in. He didn't have to do what he did, but because of his great love for us, we can win. The King of Kings is holding out his scepter to you. What do you say? The King of Kings is holding out his scepter to you. What will you do with it? Will you say yes to him or quit? Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is holding out his scepter to you. But if we fail to receive his bell, our destiny will be eternity, welling, gnashing of teeth in a place called hell where there will be no relief. So I'm here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, begging you, pleading with you to sincerely think about what you just heard and what you believe. Will you receive eternal rewards in a place of peace? Or will you be forever sorry that you didn't at least reach out to the king of kings? Will you receive him and accept his free gift? Without his blood that was shed for you, you can't make it in because in heaven there's no sin. The king of kings is holding out his scepter to you.